Hello again! Hi! Welcome back to the channel. I'm Emma and I usually make movie commentaries, but we are actively traveling through the Euphoria universe. And today we are actually watching part two of the extra content. I still don't know how to call them. Um, but I... Yes, I am wearing the same thing. It is the same makeup as the part one because I am filming them in the same day and it's gonna be separated into videos. I just watched part one. It was about Rue and Ali talking in a restaurant. It was very nice. So not any development in like the storyline except maybe for Rue maybe working through some things. I don't know. And today we are watching episode two which is about jewels and Christmas, I think. So, yeah, I hope you want to see that. <laughs> My understanding is that she is in the city and she has an apartment there, I think. We'll, we'll find out, we'll find out. So anyways, if you want to watch this episode with me, well, grab a drink, grab a snack. And without further ado, let's get into it. So where do you want to start? I don't know. Okay, why'd you run away? Let's see, what what reason does she have to run away? Uh, mostly blackmailing and <laughs> doing multiple crimes, actually. The truth is, I am a toy that people enjoy Till all of the tricks don't work anymore Do you feel like that, Jules? That you're a toy that people enjoy? Can we not talk about that? It's the only reason why we're here, honey. I think I want to go off my hormones. What? I'm no longer interested in that. How the fuck did I spend my entire life building this? Like my body and my personality and like my soul around what I think men desire. Well, that's very sad. It's embarrassing. It is. I won't lie to you. <laughs> but maybe it is a realization that we all need to realize. I don't think it's a reason to be less feminine because you can be feminine for yourself. You're looking at like a million layers of other people that I've grabbed and clung to throughout my entire life. And that's like, that's terrifying. I think we all do that. Most girls, they like automatically analyze and compare themselves to you. And you know, even if they've like mastered the art of hiding it you can still catch them doing it like their eyes wandering over your face or you know the quick takes up and down your body are you maybe projecting they look for what tags are on your clothes to see where you shop or the i mean i'm not saying the girls in euphoria are uh, leveled <laughs> or are acting like normal people but i don't think that we do that <laughs> at least i don't think that i do so they want to find flaws yeah uh, most girls. But not Rue. I think Rue was the worst at it. I think Rue put you in this box and that box revolved around you helping her. That's not better. I had a really hard six months. But if all of that was set off because of Nate and his father, don't give these two bitches that much fucking power. Bunch of shit all happened at once and I just freaked out like I panicked and I felt like if I if I didn't get out I was gonna fucking die but it's kind of the same discussion as in part one with Rue I feel like all of these feelings feeling of depression anxiety will pass you will grow up your head is gonna change because I feel like Right now, Jules feels like this, like she wants to run away or she wants to hurt herself because of external forces, maybe not internal forces, you know? She's been hurt by men and then she was blackmailed <laughs> and then she attached herself to Rue and Rue didn't follow her. They both hurt each other that night. I feel like... <sighs> Her sobriety is, like, completely dependent on how available I am to her. It is. 
<laughs> it fully is. She'd ask me to sleep over and I'd say no. I just, I'd feel like this weight, like this massive weight on my shoulders. And I'd think like, like what if she relapses, you know? Like what if she relapses because I'm not there? Well, that's what happened, but it's not your fault. <laughs> I fell completely in love with her. And yet you cheated. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not blaming you because <laughs> we've stated in the past episode, uh, in part one, that um, they did not ever talk about the fact that they were together, so it was not exclusive, um, but I feel like this is a, a, a lesson in communication and codependency. Yeah. I wonder, like, because I'm watching this show at my big age of 25, and probably if I had watched this show 10 years ago, if I had been like 15 when I watched this show, would my viewpoint be, my point of view be different? Would like my opinion about all of this be different? She did say she wanted to see you. I knew this was not just gonna be like some conversation about how well mom is doing. So her mom was an addict too? Always afraid to talk to Rue about like shit that was going on with my mom because she'd think that I felt the same way about her that like I do my mom. Well, your mom really f fucking hurt you. Don't you feel the same way about Rue as you do your mom? You just said you were angry at Rue for the imbalance she created in your relationship. So would it be fair to say that you resented that imbalance? It would be fair. I feel like real life is always such a letdown. Easier to talk to people online. You can be more vulnerable. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Fuck off, Nate. Some of the most profound relationships I've ever had have been with people I've never met. Well, that again is projection. <laughs> Gotten to know him like really well. Sure. Better than anyone else. Except you could be lying. Rue, anyone could be lying. Trust me, Rue, it's not in my head. It kind of is. I'm so sorry. I fall in love so easily. I really do. It's like almost embarrassing. It is. <laughs> Listen, I'm a Sagittarius. I dr truly think it's embarrassing. What is this place? Is that her apartment? How could it be possible that Rue loved me as much as I loved her? Why would you think that would be impossible? Oh yeah, that's a fair point that you're making. Real. Like, is this apartment in their imagination? I'm wondering. Maybe it's because of like everything with my mom, but I just had this like really bad nightmare about living in New York City with Rue. She was in the bathroom. So it is a dream. Hi, Jules. Hi, Mom. Hey. We don't like you. I wanted to say hi. And... Yeah, that's not the way to do it, guys. So that's their new house. So this is... And that those were the wings for Halloween. So her mom is still alive, I'm thinking. How could you fucking do this to me? Like, why didn't we talk about this? Because I knew that you wouldn't give her a chance. And that is fair? That is a right? Yeah, there's a reason. It was a week later, on Halloween. How long was she missing for? Oh, she went missing. Christ, and, and you found bottles in the room? Oh, that's not nice. I can't, I can't go back to East Highland. I don't want it. Jules, you beg Open the door. Okay, well, that's all the time we have for this week. Sorry if that was- Listen, I've never been to therapy, but I would like, like to me, the scenario of like opening up for like an hour and then, like you go through all these emotions and you like tell her, <laughs> the therapist all your secrets and you go deep and, and you cry and then, oh, 60 minutes, go away, get out, <laughs> you're done. That, to me, is kind of, ugh. I don't know, I don't feel like I would like that. Um, and I'm really sorry about everything that happened at the train station. And, uh, fuck, I don't know why I'm crying. I just can get really emotional during the holidays. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Jules. It's such an interesting situation. Because the train station thing was... 
bad. <laughs> and I took the side of Rue. I took Rue's side. Um, I don't know why. Because I feel like leaving someone maybe is not the best way. Or the best thing to do. But through these two episodes, you can really see how they both were good for each other but also really hurt each other and like the catalyst being like the night at the train station was painful and hurtful for both of them uh and now we're back at home we're safe <laughs> uh but but we both need therapy <laughs> and we need to talk and we need you know we both need a lot of work and we're like both super young and we've both been through so much shit but at the same time they're so young they're so young and i don't know again same thing i feel like maybe i'm too not I'm, not that i'm too old but watching this as being older hmm, watching this um and being older than both of them it's really putting putting it's really like putting everything into per perspective i think but that was <laughs> part two um, another great therapy session, maybe less, like there was, there were more images in this one, you know, they took us out of the conversation a lot of time, and, like, they put visuals to what she was uh, thinking or feeling. I mean, there's a lot of the subjects that we approached in this episode that I really don't know how to talk about, um... But it is very sad, and I think I've said it in the previous videos. It is very sad that for Jules, like her whole persona uh, was dictated by what she thought people wanted from her. Uh, especially the male gaze, of course. Uh, I feel like a lot of women in this show feel like that. Uh, Cassie, Maddie, Kat, they all, I think, feel like that. I don't know what's going to be next for Jules in season two. Will she stop the blockers? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think that I have an opinion. I don't know truly what it means. Do I want them together in season two? No. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that I want that. At least if we're going to get back together, we need... We need to put a lot of work into it. And we need to put a lot of work apart, you know? Like, we need to work on ourselves apart, <laughs> you know? But this show is messy. This show likes conflict and it likes pain. And I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in season two. But this was like a nice little break. I think and uh, I mean I just feel like I've been through two hours of great therapy nice vibes nice moments I don't know uh, like I said I've never been to therapy <laughs> maybe I should um, I go to physical therapy that's not the same thing but you know I'm working through physical trauma let's say it like that um, and I don't know, I mean, if therapy is a conversation between two people, I feel like that's great. <laughs> I would like that, but again, if, like, after 55 minutes, she's like, get out. I'd be like, what? Fuck you. Or we're having a nice conversation. Anyways, very important stuff, very deep stuff. But I cannot help thinking that with age and with time, a lot of this shit can be resolved. A lot of your perspective changes, I think. Anyways, that's it for this week. Another short one. 
if you like. Um, I like this. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I'm in my PJs. I have like a blanket. Good vibes. <laughs> I like it. And I hope you did too. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my face and season two of Euphoria, well, follow me. I don't know. You might like it. And comment anything below. I didn't talk about the whole Tyler situation. Um, maybe because I don't have anything to say. And yeah tell me anything in the comments uh, maybe some perspective that i miss or again therapy stuff that'd be nice and that is it for this week's video i hope you liked it and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next week for another video bye